One of the things that really uh, irks me, one of the things that really get on my nerves is when people try to play you like a fool and think you're so, so stupid. And unfortunately, many of us are. We're very, very foolish. We don't think worth a damn. We're just out here waiting to become an easy victim for a smooth talker. I remember I was dating a sister in my youth. And uh, I don't know why she dated me. I could tell that she really didn't like me. But y'all know, I, I, had, I, had, I had a little cash. I, I had a little money. And I didn't mind, you know, I liked her anyway. I knew, I knew I was being played, but I, I didn't have nothing else to do. And money don't really mean a lot to me like that anyway. So whatever. And uh, one day she came to me because she actually thought she was getting over for a little while because she knew I liked her and she was taking advantage of the fact that she knew that I did like her. Why did I like her? I don't know. May, I think it was probably more of a lust thing. Yeah, I think it, think it was more of a lust thing. But anyway, <laughs> she just, out of the blue one day, she just asked me, she said, you know what I'm doing, don't you? And I didn't really answer the question. I just smiled. And she got the hell out of Dodge. Because she knew that I knew that she was playing this game. And before I got angry or this game decided to turn a, a, a tide, she decided I'm getting ready to get the hell out of here while the getting's good. Because this Negro might get upset and get angry if he really start thinking about it. See, I don't like deceivers. I don't like liars. I'm not a liar. I'm not a deceiver. I can be mistaken. I can be in error, but I'm not going to intentionally lie and deceive and manipulate you. I'm not going to do that. One of the things that Caucasian pink racist people do is that they try to get over. They try to be slick. I don't, I don't like that. One of the things that they always say is uh, we need to stop looking at each other, you know, black and white and Christian Muslims or whatever. We are all in this together. Let's talk about this. We are all in this together thing. Now, there are those I call pro-black integrationists, militant black integrationists. And uh, they foam at the mouth. They they find great joy when Caucasian people say, we are all in this together. They like that. See, we're all in this together. They, they foam at the mouth just the thought. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm involved with, with, with Masa. I, I'm, I'm involved with these pink people. There's a chance that I'm going to be accepted in society as an equal. Yay! Woo! Blow, blow them a kiss. Woo! I'm going to get close to my Masa. 
But this is the problem with that type of mentality. If unfortunately you was at a bank, the bank get robbed, and the bank robber takes you hostage, then the bank robber puts you in their getaway car and they speed off and there's a police pursuit and it just so happened the bank robber loses out of control of the vehicle and it crashes, the car catch on fire, you and the bank robber, y'all burn up together. We are all in this together. The bank robber and the hostage, we are all in this together. This is something that the pro-black integrationist just ignores the fact that we are together due to a criminal action. Slavery was a criminal action. Robbing the bank, putting you in that car, put y'all together, but it was involuntary. Rape is a criminal action. You do not voluntarily give yourself to that man or that woman. They raped you. They took it by force. But y'all was together for the act of sexual satisfaction. Y'all was together, right? But it was a criminal action. You're not talking about something that's ordinary. You're talking about something we're all together in this because of a criminal activity. That's the reason why I'm here. Because of criminal activity. And it's very funny. We are all in this together. Because now it's getting to the point wh where they hurt. See, I don't like hypocrites. Don't, don't bring that garbage to me. Where was all this? We are all together during slavery. The first 10 years. The first 50 years, the first 100 years, the 200 years, 300 years. Where was this? We are all together. Where was these voices at? Where was all these people? Then you you have these Caucasian people talk about, uh, I'm an immigrant. Don't blame me for slavery. My people was immigrants. After, after slavery, actually before slavery, because some of these Caucasian came from Europe and they bought slaves. That's why I'm some of us have German names. We have Irish names because the slave master was Irish. The, the slave master was German. So come on. See, they keep trying to play these games. And then even after slavery, then of course the Caucasian, these races, opened up the doors of America because they did not want to do right by the ex-slaves. So they brought their Caucasian pink brothers and sisters over to America because they had skills. They was dependent upon slave labor. They did not have skills. They don't want to do right by the slaves because if the slaves do the work and get economically economically strong, the, per the people who was once slaves could actually take over this country. So we're going to bring in our boys from Ireland and Germany and Sweden or whatever they come from. So because they have the skill, and then y'all immigrants created these unions to keep the dark-skinned people out. Come see. Ooh, this pisses me off. We are all together. Where was all this all together during slavery? When you was forming unions, so these dark-skinned, my ancestors could not get work. They could not try to, they had a hard time trying to survive and take care of themselves. What was all this, we are all together crap during Jim Crow just a few years ago? That was a long time ago. That's another one of their, their favorite words. That was, that was a long time ago. Where was all this, we are all together? When dark-skinned people was out in the streets protesting about the death of Trayvon Martin, and then there was little reaction from you when the verdict was not guilty. Let the murderer go. Where was all this we are all together stuff? The brother, what is his name? Felipe Castile or whatever. Anyway, there are so many of us that don't get justice. And you don't hear these Caucasian people talking. We're all in this together. Only 
if it benefits them. That's what it's all about. And y'all so stupid. You you want to be with your slave master so much. You want to join, you want to be with them so much that you just you just simply forget what has happened to us. Now all of a sudden, uh, now if they supported us, I could understand. There were some Caucasian people protesting with Black Lives Matter and Trayvon Martin and many of these evils. Very, very few. I can guarantee you the ones that's running around talking about we all in this together, you did not see their raggedy face in the crowd because they manipulated, they liars. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and anybody with common sense can tell you these people are criminals. You do not trust a criminal. So now we're at the point where my brother, the prophet of doom, talks about it's payback. But you're connected to them when you should be separating yourself from them because you should. What are we getting paid back for? Because I was because I'm a victim. I was taken hostage. I deserve to be burned up in a car. I didn't rob the bank. I'm a victim. But I'm but I'm going to get I'm it's, it's payback for me. I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing. And criminal behavior and criminal actions is just ignored. We all in this together because because now you hurt. It's just like certain people that you deal with. When you hurting, uh don't mean nothing. But then all of a sudden it's happening to them. Oh, it's a big deal now. Man, we, we need to work on this together. Yeah, but when it was just me, you didn't give a damn. See, I don't I don't like that. I don't like that. And we are very silly, stupid people, whether you are Caucasian, whether you are black or whether you're Asian or whatever. Here we are as human beings. You have a few idiots pulling the strings. We outnumber. Matter of fact, they cannot do nothing without us. But we're going to follow the leader of some idiots. And we're going to actually allow them to destroy this planet. And don't do nothing. This goes to show you that the whole planet of human beings is the whole earth is nothing but a slave plantation. That's what it proves. Because on a slave plantation... You could have five, six, or less slave massa, and you could have a hundred slaves on the plantation, and the hundred slaves didn't do nothing against their oppressor, nothing at all. The slave master, five or six, beat you, humiliated you, raped you every day, whatever they wanted to do, and the hundred slaves would not rebel and do nothing against the little five, six, two slave master. Why is that? Slave, you have a slave mentality. This is why you get so happy. Oh, master want to be with me. We all in this together. I would rather die and go out of existence than team up with a criminal who have done nothing to apologize. They have done nothing to heal the wounds that they have caused. Done nothing. They are still nothing but criminals. They think that they are slick, manipulative, deceivers. I don't want nothing to do with it. You want to go and, and we all in this together? Well, you go ahead and do that. I'm not interested trying to team up and be friends with criminals, demons, slave owners, murderers and rapists. But now they hurt. Their material wealth, their standard of living is 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 being messed with. Oh, we so let's let's get together and try to save it. I would rather go extinct. I'd rather go, I'd rather get the payday. Mess with criminals. And then you talking about what I'm saying don't make sense. No, you are a coward. What you said don't make sense. When we should be fighting 
and rebelling against these owners of the of the earthly slave plantation. Got that out the way. Woo, there's something that grinds, grinds my gears. As you know, and I do it a lot, I put out videos that defend the soul sisters. I don't care if you're a drunkard. I don't care if you're a crackhead. I don't care if you have blue weave in your head. I don't care if you look like Corky the Clown with your makeup. I don't care about that stuff. From this rostrum, from this platform, I am going to defend my soul sister, period. I don't give a care what you do. Now, you do do things that screw it up. I will let you know. There's no doubt about that. But when these silly cowards, these uh, women, women bashing males with their corny information, when they come around, they will attack you. But I'm bringing the fire. Why don't you bring that stuff to me? Bring it to me, Tommy Sotomayor. Bring it to me, all you suckers out there with this argument. You want to attack these, these women. Bring it to me. But they won't bring it to me. They know me by now. Won't even comment on the video no more. At first, they're going to try to teach me. You can't teach me a damn thing. So then they even, they go to, you a feminine. I can tell you was raised by a single mother. All this other, they don't, they don't even do that no more. Because it means nothing. You can't do nothing with this fire that's coming from this, uh, uh, this furnace. You can't do nothing with it. When I was growing up, that's something you don't do. You don't talk about mama. You don't do that. I don't care who your mama was. I don't care what she did. I don't care what she looked like. If you talk about my mama, somebody going to put their foot up your backside. You don't talk about nobody's mama. You know? There was no men running around blaming women. They, they created the ghetto and they ruled the neighborhood for 40 years and all this other crazy stuff. I don't care if a man was drunk. He never was sitting around drunk blaming a woman for his problems like that. Of course you had some idiots because all this had to come from somewhere and a lot of it I know came from some old heads but overall I'm telling you from where I come from Negroes talk like that you're going to get a beat down from other men real quick. You don't talk about mama because if you talk about my mama, you're talking about my wife, you're talking about my grandmother, you're talking about my daughters and men wouldn't go in for it. You think you talk about women and you think your, your mama, you think your daughter, you think your auntie, all that, they are exempt. That ain't how things work. If my mama is a hoe, your mama a hoe too. And if she ain't a hoe, I'm going to call her one because you call my mama a hoe. Simple as that. I was watching the movie they made about uh, that rapper, our soul brother, Tupac Shakur. And his mother went from this strong revolutionary type sister. And she messed around and got hooked on dope. She became a crackhead. And of course, as you know, one of the founders of the Black Panther Party, Huey Newton, you know, he became a victim of, of drugs also. And I have, there's nothing that I can say on that issue because I understand, you know, trying to fight this struggle. And even though we had the Black Panthers and the Nation of Islam and we had the uh, Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement, very few people was involved. It's very much pressure. You suffering. Many of them was getting murdered. They were sacrificing. And the, and the masses of the people were not responding. They weren't coming out to help in the fight. But whatever benefit 
the Black Panthers done, whatever benefit Dr. King achieved or whoever achieved, here come all these other 40, 50 million Negroes. They was happy to collect and benefit from the sacrifice and the death of this small few willing to stand up like uh, Tupac Shakur's mother. And it just so happened out of all that pressure, she just messed around and ended up just doing drugs is a just just a way out to the delete reality for a while. And she messed around and got on crack. But Tupac loved his mother. He didn't turn around, oh you crackhead. You should have gotten you should have got married and maybe you wouldn't be on crack. You know, silly stuff like these dudes be talking about. You know, these old punks, these little chump sissy fied Negroes. And they supposed to come from I guess they come from two family uh home. And y'all a bunch of punks and sissies. All thing you do is run your mouth. What do you do special? Since there's something wrong with the thugs, since there's something wrong with all these people. Children being uh, raised by single mothers. What's special about your ass? I don't see nothing special. What, what are you doing special? You get on the internet, hide your damn face like the coward you are, and write some bull crap. What's special about you? You don't do nothing. You sit on your ass, watch videos all day, talk a bunch of crap. What do you do? Nothing. But Tupac took care of his mother. He didn't make mockery of, of his mother. He loved his mother and did whatever he could to help his mother. So if there's something wrong with the black woman and the black woman, this soul sister is our mother. If she's on crack, whatever her problem is, she's a drunkard, whatever her problem is, you don't make mockery of your mama. You do like Tupac done and you take care of your mama. Dear mama, that's the name of his rap. No matter what you are, I still love you, mama. So if feminism is a problem and you don't want our soul sisters engaging in feminist activity, first of all, you should ask them, why? What's going on? That's what you need to do. A lot of sisters are, were attracted to, to femi feminism or being a feminist because they was getting their ass beat by their by their husbands and their boyfriends. Many of them was just like the Caucasian woman. The man or male will leave you. You got to go out and get a, a job. And then you don't even get paid the same wage as a male doing the same work. I have all these children I need to take care of because... My, hu my husband left me for another woman. A lot of them was married. Fool. Y'all just so silly. And just so stupid. It, it, it irks me. Woo. You won't change. You want this soul sister to change. Change her behavior. We can't accept. Who the hell are you to... Tell somebody about their behavior. What's what's up with your damn behavior? Like you holy and righteous. Here you got somebody like Tommy Sotomayor. Talking all this crap. Profane, vulgar, and nasty. Who the hell... Who the hell is he to tell somebody about their bad behaviors? Who worse than Tommy Sotomayor? I ain't never heard such vulgar and nasty, insane talk. If a woman, I heard somebody said that Tommy Sotomayor said, yeah, I, you know, if I was a dentist, I'd put a woman to sleep. And when she wake up, her vagina be hurting because I done got it. You know, put it, what, you know, what kind, what kind of, and y'all going for this, for this kind of stuff. There was a video where he was watching soft porn and his daughter was right there in, in, in the room. All this is acceptable, and the women got the bad behavior, but nothing's wrong with Tommy Sotomayor, right? You are insane. You, you, you're crazy. If you got the nerve to judge somebody, and in religion, 
It says, judge not, lest ye be judged. Because if you can dish it out, then you need to be well able to take it. And then when you start telling people like Tommy Sotomayor and all these other coward, faceless, troll, stupid, you know, I think you know, on, the, on the real tip, I think a lot of these guys are on the down low, really. And if you ain't with a black woman, a soul sister, and you're a soul brother, you're a black man, you're not with a soul sister, as far as I'm concerned, you're gay. You're a homosexual. Because there's no woman on this planet that you can relate to other than your own soul sister. She's your soul mate. But you're frustrated because you want to try to find a slave that would do what you want the slave to do. That's what it's all about. Everybody, everybody out here looking for slaves. Black conscious slave. You want a wife. You don't want a wife. You want a slave. Serve me. You won't change. But you don't want to change. That's not how things work. You can you can be an idiot. You can be a whoremonger. You can do you can do whatever you want to do. But the women's supposed to be nice and clean and cute. And behave for you. Get the hell out of here with that crap. Mm. A woman can't raise a man. Let's get out of here with that crap. All in nature. Females. Female deer. Female elephants. Female zebras. Whatever female. They raise their male and female babies with no problem. Now here is the human being, female, the woman, but she can't raise the babies. She must have a male. Now don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful thing. If you have a man in the house, wonderful, beautiful thing. And the children deserve to have their father in the house and the family thing, whatever. Beautiful thing. But women, all females, are capable of raising their babies by themselves if necessary. And since many of these men abandon their children and their wives and girlfriends for another woman or for another man, whatever the case may be, she has to raise these children by herself. This soul sister, this black woman has proven over the generations I can do it, Negro, with or without you. Get out of my face, because you're gonna come correct or don't come or don't come at all. And I'm with the sisters. You can't call me gay because I'm with the sisters. You the one with the brothers. And that old raggedy cave Becky with the good hair. She'll mess with a dog. A goat. She don't care. So you ain't nothing special. She ain't choice about what she lay down with. That's a known fact. That's why they always talk about the freaks come out at night. And really that was the only reason why in the past a lot of soul brothers really wanted to get with a Caucasian woman because they, they wanted to get with a freak. She was known to be a freak to do the abnormal, the nasty, the vulgar, the profane. That's what that was about. And of course with integration, now the poor soul sisters, they turned out, they become freaks. All of us now are freaks of nature because we've been falling behind a freak. And you have to be a damn freak to sit around here and want to beat up and make mockery of your, of your mother. So I know you don't want to come my direction. I know you don't want to deal with me. I'm very old school. I know what, I know we gave our sisters more respect. Well, it was different in your day. It ain't no damn different. She's a woman, ain't she? Do like Tupac did. Love them. Love your mama. Whatever the problem is, help her solve it. Help her get better. The problem is you are just as sick or, 
or more sick than what she is. And you can't help yourself, so you damn sure can't help her. Mm. I just recently watched a bootleg. <laughs> I very rarely go to the movies. I, I I don't want to waste my funds with you know all that entertainment foolishness. I can wait for the bootleg. In fact, this was a very very good bootleg. It was the film about our soul brother, the rapper Tupac Shakur. I think that the movie was pretty decently made. Being a person who grew up, well, not actually grew up. I mean, I, I, I remember, I don't know. I've never been a person that really liked rap, but I was attracted to Tupac Shakur, his music. I remember when he first started. I remember when he first started with uh, Digital Underground. In fact, I really, I really like that song, The Humpy Dance. You know, that, that bass. Boom, doom, boom, doom. Get their chance, do your chance, do the hump. Dun, dun, come on, do the humpy hump. You know, I, I remember that. Ooh, I got that on my old VHS tape somewhere. Yeah, I, I remember what, all that history I got on my tape somewhere when that when it first happened, and uh, that was the first introduction that we had to the brother we would know of as this rapper, Tupac Shakur. Now, according to the the movie, Tupac really was a very intelligent. Per he was a, a very intelligent young man. Very. Academically attracted to the academic, he was, you know, into the culture. He was influenced by Shakespeare. Here's a young person growing up in New York City, probably not in the best of neighborhoods, grew up around Black Panthers, mind you, and he is he is really attracted and likes Shakespeare. I remember reading Shakespeare. Some of you, oh, that, that old European, uh, whatever, y'all idiots. You know, this type of literature, if you read the story of Macbeth, that, I mean, Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare, y'all, I mean, we get all off into the skin color of people. Shakespeare was a, this guy was a genius writing these stories. Shakespeare uh, Macbeth, you know, the things that, that uh, William Shakespeare, also you know that he did help write the King James Version of the Bible. But Tupac was raised around these brothers and sisters. They was doing their best to keep it real. And I mean, you couldn't ask it. You couldn't ask for no better than that. Tupac, hands on with the warriors, growing up in that environment, he saw what they had to deal with. We all know that the Black Panthers were some serious persons. His mother taught him from an early age, single mother, because the father was doing his thing. He couldn't really be sticking around. And then Tupac had a stepfather. And, you know, all these people talking about the mothers. If if father is not around or can't be around, mother has to step up. And there's no doubt in my mind, because of the influence of his mother, Tupac knew exactly what to do and how to do it. She was a good teacher. His mother in the movie took young Tupac 
and told him because she could recognize his potential, the greatness in her son. <coughs> Excuse me. And she told him, look, son, the enemy will give you the tools to destroy yourself. You can look at that talking or speaking to an individual, but look at us as a so-called group or a so-called people. We're not a people. All these various groups we're in, but regardless, we are called a people, but we can't get nothing going because we are given the tools so that we can destroy ourselves. Mm, mm, mm. We take the money that we earn and we don't benefit ourselves. We use it and throw it away. Our fame, our fortune, whatever we get out of the society, whatever tools that we get, the drugs, the liquor, and then we look at ourselves as individuals. Tupac, be careful. The enemy will give you the tools to destroy yourself. So as you come up, I'm going to give you this money, allow you to have this money, the fame, the women. And you see what the women did to Tupac in this movie. He got accused of rape because he was messing around with these, with the, with, with trash. He got hooked on liquor and the drugs and this party environment. But Tupac knew better. But he wouldn't do better. Tupac not only could have, was a, a, a fantastic rapper, but Tupac had the potential. And anybody could see it. He had the potential to be one of the greatest leaders of the struggle, probably even greater than, than, than Brother Malcolm or Marcus Garvey or Elijah Muhammad or any of those prior to himself. Because he had a heads up. He could have learned from their mistakes. But instead, he got caught up in the tools that the enemy gives you to destroy yourself. Dr. King, using him as an example. Dr. King was an innocent person. They said that Dr. King smoked a little bit. He drank a little bit. He messed around with women outside of his marriage. But the thing, the difference between Dr. King and Tupac is that although the enemy gave Dr. King the tools to destroy himself, Dr. King was able to stay focused. Dr. King was still able to stay on point. And when you are able to do that, that makes you extremely dangerous. I can't give you, I give you money. That ain't working. You got the fame. That's not working. Giving you the women. You got the liquor. You got all these things and you still talking about don't go to the Vietnam War. You still talking about civil rights. We got to do something about this. So on April the 4th, 1968, they assassinated Dr. King. They knew that many of us are nothing but followers. We don't think for ourselves. So they knew if they kill the, the head, the body will fall. And then what makes it so bad, then those who are left behind, knowing, just like Tupac, knowing, having an idea of what they should do, now the people that follow Dr. King, they senators, state senators and congress people and talk shows and I'm going to give you the tools to destroy yourself. They way off course. They fell into the trap. This is what we must be careful of. And this is, a lot of you may believe, oh, you don't like Farrakhan or you don't like 
General Seti or Sadnetta or Umar Johnson. This has not this I don't know these people like that. But I understand the tools that that you will get that can be used to destroy yourself and you become victim. I'm trying to tell you and urge you to keep you on a path so that you can be great. So you can live up to your fullest potential. Or you fall victim to what I call Tupac syndrome. Because Tupac had the greatest potential. But he, but he fell victim to the tools that your enemy gives you to destroy yourself. So it really don't take a lot of effort on their part. Because you're, you're going to kill yourself. And it's sad. It's very sad. Well, you may believe some of these persons haven't fell into the trap, but it's quite clear that they've been given these tools and they have fallen in the trap. Because if you don't fall in the trap, then the enemy begins to start taking drastic measures. And you see this in when you examine the life of Dr. King or Malcolm X or Medgar Evers or anybody that couldn't be bought and paid for who was able to stay on course no matter how many women, no matter how much they got drunk, how many cigarettes they smoked, no matter what, I know I'm, they stay on the course. This makes you dangerous living in a racist society. And I don't mean no harm. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I'm not a jealous. I'm not a hater. I want you to be successful because your success means our success. And really, I don't, I'll be happy to shut my mouth. I have nothing to say. But when things clearly are not going the way they should. And I see a very dismal future for our children. Somebody has to say something. That's the, that's the least I can do is open my mouth. Many of you just smile and you skin and grin. Go Umar, you just cheerleaders. You don't care what they do. You know in your heart that they messing up. But you, you, you chilly. I love you, Umar. I love you, Brother Farka. I love you, G General Seti. Go ahead, Sadnata. We just clap our hands and we chillies and you're all going to hell. Well, actually, you're already in hell. The next step is to death do us part and cover you up with some dirt. That's the next step. It's on the horizon. Time is running out. Time is not going to wait for us to get our act together. Time ran, time ran out for Tupac. You could see he was trying to struggle with himself to get up out of that. But it was too late. Because the tools that he was given, he allowed for himself to be destroyed. He voluntarily destroyed himself. And I see that out here in this so-called black conscious community. Many, many brothers, basically, some sisters, but it's really the brothers on a path of self-destruction. And in their destruction, they're going to take a whole lot of y'all with them because you are you can't think for yourself you can't move for yourself and when that head dies you die with it and it should not be that way we all should be leaders unto ourselves and accept the responsibility just as much as the so-called leadership
else do our thinking for us. And that's really, that's bad business. That's why the members of the Nation of Islam, under the guidance of Louis Farrakhan, that's why they are now on a campaign to try to straighten up the continuous mess, this confusion that Louis Farrakhan brings that they have to explain when it should be self-explanatory, but the, but the more you look into it, the more questions that's raised if you know what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad actually taught. So I'm going to, now if I'm incorrect, I have no problem with saying, you know, you got me there, you made a good point, but I truly, truly doubt it. And the reason why I truly, truly doubt it is because I was introduced to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad when I was probably as young as seven years old, seven, eight, or nine years old. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was alive and kicking when I was introduced this teaching. My relatives who were members of the Nation of Islam, who are still members of the Nation of Islam under Farrakhan today, they gave me not only the books of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but they also gave me the lessons and really everything else that they had because they knew that I was really a believer and I was really down and I loved, I wanted to be part of the Nation of Islam. But unfortunately, I was a little child. I, I was a, I, I was a child. I could not join uh, the Nation of Islam coming from up out of the backwoods of Mississippi. So my only teacher was not even them, my relative. My only teacher, my only reference point is the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad coming from his books and his tapes or whatever information I got that was from him. There, I, there was no minister. I did not know nothing about Louis Farrakhan until the 1980s. I didn't know nothing about Malcolm or any of the ministers. Only Elijah Muhammad. And this is what I know. From what I learned from being a student of Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad said that he was the modern day prophet Muhammad. That's what he taught. He never claimed to be a modern day Jesus or Christ. He never, I've, I've never read that. What reference are you getting this from? Or are you making this claim yourself based on what? Not his teaching because Elijah Muhammad did not teach that. Elijah Muhammad said, and there are videos on YouTube that you can do your own little research if you don't want to read and try to look it up yourself. Out of Elijah Muhammad's mouth, he says there would be nobody after him. There would be no divine reminders. He was the last messenger of Allah, the last one. That's it. The end. That's why Elijah Muhammad purposely did not leave an heir. Because if you didn't get it while he was here, then it's done. That's it. Point blank. Elijah Muhammad taught us not to follow dead people. So that would mean after he passed, that would be the end. You can continue to believe in the teachings, but you cannot follow a dead man. Elijah Muhammad did not teach to follow dead folks. Dead people cannot help you. He said, after his passing or when he leaves, do not change my teachings Revise or bring some type of what, what like like what Louis Farrakhan has done. Louis Farrakhan has what they said uh, gave us a, a different type of understand. No, Elijah Muhammad made it very clear: do not change my teachings. One of the better representatives of Elijah Muhammad's teachings would probably be Eric Muhammad of of Muhammad Temple Number. 15. If you really want to really want to know the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, you probably have a better understanding coming from him because Eric Muhammad 
just like Malcolm, always make a reference point. Elijah Muhammad said this. Elijah Muhammad teaches us this. Minister Farrakhan can speak for four hours and may not never reference his source of information, which is, which is supposed to be the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, Louis Farrakhan say that he is a Christian. In, in the 1980s, he went on tour teaching in Christ all things are possible. And he was teaching that he's a Christian, he's a Muslim, he's a Jehovah Witness, he's all this and that and that and that. You cannot be all those things. Oil and water does not mix. You can make a claim, I'm something like a Christian. I'm so You cannot be all those different things. Bringing confusion to this teaching because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that you are Muslims by nature. So how can you be all these other different things? It makes sense. You bring, you bring in a bunch of, of confusion to the people. And I feel sorry for the followers. Y'all have to sit around here and really and try to explain this. And for, for people who think simply, you might be able to get away with it. But there are those who are looking at what is being said. And it's, it's confusing to them. Because it's this, this stuff just don't make any sense. Louis Farrakhan has made Elijah Muhammad Jesus. But Elijah Muhammad said that he was the modern day prophet Muhammad. How can he be both? Also, Louis Farrakhan says, I'm Jesus. I mean, I'm not, I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a Jehovah Witness and I'm this and I'm that. But all the time you will hear him make it very, very clear. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. The Muslim world. If, if you all these different things, why is your concern only with what's happening with the Muslim world? Why aren't you concerned what's happening in the Christian world? The world of the Baptist and the, uh, and the world of the Jew and all this. If you all these different things. He makes it very clear. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm not a Christian follower. I'm not a uh, Jehovah Witness follower, a Jewish follower of Eli. I am a Muslim. Oh, wow. Mm. See, the Quran talks about confusion. Confusion coming to people who are, are hypocrites. And Louis Farrakhan, a hypocrite is simply somebody who is trying to be something that they are not. That's what a hypocrite is. It's not, it's not uh, this thing that y'all talk about, belief. Because if that's the case, a whole lot of people be hypocrites. You have the right to change your mind. I used to believe this and I used to believe that. That don't make you a, a hypocrite. A hypocrite pretends they believe. That's the, a hypocrite. So you cannot call Malcolm X a hypocrite because Malcolm dismissed himself and made it very clear, I'm no longer part of that. However, if Malcolm had humbled himself and went with the program and pretend he was going along with the with whatever was going on, whatever they was doing, then you could call Malcolm a hypocrite. The Holy Quran says very clear for Muslims, the Quran says, not only Farrakhan, but all Muslims, it says in the Quran. Do not take Christians and Jews for friends. But Louis Farrakhan has Jewish friends. Of course, he has Christian friends. He also claimed to be, I'm also a Christian. So he's a Christian and a Muslim inside himself. You got a, you got a whole lot of confusion and, 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 and hatred stuff going on. Because Christians and Muslims have been fighting and carrying on for a long, long time. In Christ, all things are possible. So Minister Farrakhan has made Elijah Muhammad the modern day Christ. Elijah Muhammad is not dead. Now as far as we concern, and as far even as far as the American law is concerned, if you are if you have been missing for at least seven years, they they are I think according to the law, they just presume that, that you're you're deceased. 
So Elijah Muhammad has made no attempt to make an appearance or communicate to nobody. Even Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan never says that Elijah Muhammad is talking to him or communicating with him. So, I mean, what it is, out of sight, out of mind. You're getting no information. You're getting no nothing from this person that you talk about that you follow. Elijah Muhammad taught not to follow dead folks. What can a dead man do for you? Nothing. That's why many people choose assassination because dead men tell no tales. They figure if I blow your brains out, that's it. And usually for, for uh, the people of soul, you kill our leader and we just fall apart because we believe anything. We don't know how to be our own head. We don't know how to lead ourselves. We fall in love with celebrity and and and, and, and charisma and, and, and all this manipulation of words and fancy talk. Now, if Elijah, see, now this is the thing. If Elijah Muhammad is the modern day Christ, doesn't that defeat the purpose of the nation of Islam teaching? Where they make mockery of Christians because the Christians have been waiting on Jesus for 2,000 years. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has not been among us since 1975. Pretty soon it'll be 2,000 years. When is Elijah Muhammad going to show back up? So what you've done is you made the teachings of Elijah Muhammad just like Christianity. So so what's the sense of being converted to Islam when, you, when they both the same thing? What, what difference do it make? So why are you talking, oh, the, uh, that's the white man's religion. What have you done to Elijah Muhammad teaching? It's the white man religion too. You waiting on, you call Elijah Muhammad Christ, you call him the new Jesus, and you waiting on him to come return and come back just like the same teachings that the slave master taught the slave. Waiting on your savior, your redeemer, or whatever you want to call him, to come and save you. It's the same thing. The whole thing makes no sense. So, you know, I, I can't sit back and just be quiet because perhaps I'm helping somebody sift through all this, this, this stuff here. I would suggest to you to leave all this religion stuff alone and come home to reality. Start using your mind. Look, in, look at things from a realistic manner. Whatever you think that you can't do, you need some God. You can do it without religious influence. Just try it. And you'll see that I'm correct. You can be just as successful, and there are many people who don't acknowledge God just as successful or more successful than anybody who's a believer in, in some God. We need to leave that alone. It's messing us up. It's making y'all look really insane. 